Hi folks, it's Andy. Welcome to this week's Kendo Rant. I've got loads of questions for you today and I'm dying to get into them. But just before we do, you know all the like, share, subscribe. So I'm not even going to say that. Oh, I just did. Anyway, uh, you know to do all that sort of thing. Um, don't forget as well, uh, these questions, most of them come from the Kendo Show Early Access group. There's a link in the description down below. And I think there's something on the screen somewhere here as well telling, telling you to go and join that group. It's a great group to be in. Uh, it's free to join, of course. Great thing about it. Not only do you put your questions in there for this show, um, but there's Kendoka from all over the world, literally thousands of them in there of all different levels. So you get their two cents as well. So you get a great conversation going on in that group. It's also called the Early Access Group because it's where I actually post a lot of the instructional content before it's released anywhere else. Stuff like the Kendo Zero to Shodan videos or the other instructional videos that we put out. Um, so yeah, you definitely want to be in that group. So go and click it. <laughs> and most importantly, if you do like the videos that I put out, um, I'm doing my best to put as many videos out to you guys as I can, uh, whether it's either through these Kendo rants or whether it's by live streaming in the uh, early access group, that's something else that I do in there, um, or whether it's like the uh, analysis stroke translation type videos that we've been doing, some great ones of those that we've done recently. Ishida Sensei from the Osaka Kendo Federation and uh, Ega Sensei, of course, from the Hokkaido uh, Kendall Federation as well telling us about how to train at home uh, with some great videos about them so if you haven't seen them go and watch them because uh, that's great as well but if these videos do bring you any um, value whatsoever uh, don't forget to support the channel uh, and support kendostar.com that's my website, uh, of course, that sells fantastic, amazing kendo equipment um, all around the world. Uh, it's really brilliant. And if you don't believe me, check out our reviews. I say it in every video. It shouldn't be new to you now, but if for some reason this is the first video of mine that you've ever watched, go and shop at kendostar.com because it's the best website in the world for kendo equipment. Um, right, let's get into these questions. Uh, first one. Uh, for Jordan, many sensei, including yourself, talked about how there should be should or is uh, it is acceptable to be a bit of hand meat in the kamae uh, now i'm finding with that approach as i start to train my ashtabaki that i'm getting big blisters from twisting the back foot as i set off to strike any recommendations in chudan it's simple just keep the back foot straight with a slight hand me in jordan i'm not sure how to approach this so in jordan when you do left jordan all right when you're in chudan you're like uh, straight on to your your partner but when you're in left jordan your, your hips turn very, very, well, not very slightly, they, they sort of turn out that way. Uh, and that's why your, your sword is diagonal, because it comes on, the left hand stays on the center line. But because your uh, shoulders are turned away and your hips are turned away, um, the, 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 the right hand comes this way, and that's why it's diagonal that way. So what you're talking about is your, your right foot, which is going to launch you. Um, if that's turned out to the side as well, um, you're getting blisters because you're twisting. Uh, as you push forward. If that's the case, then you can still stand in hand me and you can still, um, to be honest, in, in modern Jordan, like competitive Jordan, like with the Shinai, with the Kata, of course, it is in hand me. It says that actually in the book. But um, when you do the Shinai, lots of, lots of competitors now, they actually keep their hips more straight this way because it's, it, it's kind of faster, I think. Um, to travel forward and they keep their feet straight as well uh, so you could try that um, or you could even turn a little bit um, and instead of try not to twist as you as you push off but instead push more that way which is a bit counterintuitive to what we normally learn in terms of Chudan. I'm not a Jordan expert if I'm honest with you uh, but if I was doing Jordan I'd probably stand a little bit more straight on than you do in the kata. Uh, next one what are your thoughts on footy ball and uh, leather tuba? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by footy ball, but like footy ball means a stick that you swing. Um, so like uh, there's ones that like are for wrist strengthening or there's ones that are like uh, like Saburi aids. I've done videos about the Saburi things that we uh, put up on uh, Kendo Star, for example, and they're all really good. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the good, good training. Uh, leather Tsuba. Yeah, Leather Tsuba are cool. Are cool. Um, like the, the personally, I the, like the the hardened rawhide style leather tuba and um, we've got some on kendo staff you want to go and have a look um either the woven ones or the plain ones i think they look really cool they look really good with use i'm not a massive fan of ones that are like of tanned leather um, the, especially the big thick chunky ones that have got embossed design I, I i'm personally not a huge fan of that um i don't i don't know they just they look a little bit 
I don't know, they don't seem to fit into me with the whole kendo aesthetic, but that's just me. Um, you know, if you've got a cool one, use it. Um, next one, why no shoto in kendo uh, when we have it in the kata? I know there's tan kendo, uh, but that's different. Um, we have the shoto in uh, kata for a couple of reasons. Um, one is uh, to preserve the history of kendo uh, and its links to kenjutsu and also to learn um, some aspects of semi that are particularly uh, important to higher levels. Um, in uh, it, It's there as a learning tool um, as, a pro, as opposed to a practical tool, um, the, the, the kotachi no kata. Um, they're not there to teach you realistic strikes in, w in much the same way that, you know, you could say the same as why, you know, why we have uh, this waza in the kendo no kata, but why you don't have it in kendo, why not? Because it's not there to be directly ported over. Um, kendo is not about sword fighting. It's not about um, winning duels. Um, so uh, it's not relevant to fight only with a shoto uh, in uh, kendo matches in a shinai context. Um, and that's why. If you want to do that, then yeah, do Tan Kendo. Uh, next one, you just advertise that the Shinobu, Shinobu Boga set will soon be discontinued. Uh, why will this be? Uh, is it because you uh, try to renew the design or because the maker will no longer make it? Well, uh, we're the maker, so it's, it's, it's our original Boga. It's not that, um, you know, we get it from another party. Um, it's, it's a Kendo star original Boga. But, um, look, we renew our lineup all the time. Uh, and we were originally intending to discontinue the Shinobu Borg set, la, uh, Shinobu Borg set last year and replace it with the Shinobu Wraith, uh, which is an upgraded model. Um, and I personally think that the Shinobu Wraith, it takes a lot of the things that I thought that the Shinobu needed improving on uh, and, and, and makes those modifications, and it, it, it's a better Borg set. Um, so the intention was to discontinue it before, uh, and uh, yeah, it was upgraded with the Shinobu Wraith. Uh, we do this with lots of our bog sets. Look, you know, our, our range is continually improving, and I don't, you know, I've got a very uh, uh, sort of distinct vision in mind as to what I think Kendo Star uh, exists for and exists to assist the Kendall community uh, in achieving or acquiring equipment that really um, suits their needs and enables them to practice Kendall comfortably and safely. Um, and I think all of our Borg sets do that. But when uh, when the concept, each Borg has its own sort of concept as well um, and a reason why you would choose that one over a different one. And when those those start to overlap too much, if somebody says to me, why should you choose this one and not that one? And when the answer is a little bit, it, it, it's not a clear cut answer, then it, it makes me question as to whether uh, we've got the lineup correct or not. Um, and I think that that's what, one of the things that I'm constantly developing as the owner of a, of a, a Kendall Borger business is to have a, a range of Borger that fits the needs of the community and is easy for the community to um, select from. What I don't want is, you know, I could just keep adding to it. Oh, this is a new idea. This is, this is something new. This is a new thing. Um, and I could just keep adding to it. And, and in five years' time, we'd have sort of 50 different Borger sets on the website and you wouldn't know where to look. Um, because the difference is actually, to, to me, they're quite big because I work in the kendo industry. I work in, you know, the difference, the, the difference between five millimeter stitch bogu and six millimeter bogu to me is huge, but to the average kendo guy, it's, it, they're never going to know the difference. Um, but that's, that's because it's, it's my, uh, it, it, well, it's my, it's not just my passion. It's, it's my career. So, um, look. To get to the point of this, <laughs> I can't have a massive, uh, always expanding lineup of Borg sets uh, because it doesn't make sense for us to do that, not for the, from the customer's point of view and not from our point of view as a, a business. We're continually trying to make a, a, a lineup of Borger that suits everybody and is easy to select from. And that's why from time to time, we'll introduce new sets and we'll discontinue others.
Okay. <laughs> Uh, next one. I was wondering if Kendall Star Shinais could be used in regular competitions like the uh, WKC World Championships or other uh, championships. I know that some other Shinais have a brown sticker with numbers on it uh, and that yours have a black sticker. Uh, so is there any dif difference? Okay, so I actually typed a quick uh, thing of this because this is, a, this is one of those things that's like out there that kind of grinds my gears a little bit. Uh, I'm, kind of <laughs> I'm thinking of putting up a video actually um, where I'm going to kind of dispel popular myths in Kendall, uh, you know, like, and this is one of them. That brown SSP sticker uh, looks something like this. Um, like, it's been pushed by the people that push that sticker to mean that, that the, the Shinai that carry that sticker um, adhere to some kind of rules or regulations, uh, and even that that sticker is required for a Shinai to be, um, uh, what do you call it, like... Uh, allowed or um, permissible for use in in some sort of tournament and it's total nonsense it's just not the case there's one tournament in japan that's connected to the own to, to, to the people that run uh the company that prints those stickers um that requires the children because it's a children's tournament uh, to use shinai with that sticker that's it all right um it's a sticker that's put out by a, um, a, a co I think it's called the All Japan Budogu Cooperative Association or something like that. Um, they basically sell the sheets of stickers to Shinai manufacturers uh, for them to stick on the, uh, the Shinai at will. All right, there's no examination process, there's no uh, checks or anything. They just get the sheets of sticker and they just stick them on. They just stick them on. Go, okay, this has got the SSP, SSP, SSP. It means nothing. Um, it's not worth the, the paper that the sticker's printed on. And I personally, I don't like the way that the sticker itself is pushed um, on Shinai manufacturers and burger shops in Japan uh, as if it's some sort of way of uh, forcing, extracting uh, money out of uh, these companies uh, to give the appearance that the Shinais have an official uh, meet some sort of official regulation when they just don't. Um, so, no, you don't need the, the brown SSP sticker uh, for the Shinai to, to meet any sort of Shinai checks or criteria. Um, and the Kendo Star sticker that's on them, the black one, that's just got a simple warning on it that tells you not to like do silly stuff with the Shinai um, and to just use it for Kendo and to look after it properly. Um, and Kendo Star Shinai are perfectly acceptable to be used in high-level tournaments, including the World Championships, and they often are by lots and lots of people. So please don't worry about anything like that when you're shopping for Shinai at Kendo Star. Right, uh, next one. Who's the sensei that you studied about who has passed on, uh, I assume you mean died, uh, that you would like to have had the chance to ch train with? So I actually thought about this a little bit because... Uh, the senseis that kind of come to mind that have passed on, um, that were, you know, kind of quite influential to me, um, I actually did have the chance to practice with and train with. Uh, so senseis like Toda Sensei and Chiba Sensei were two uh, exquisite senseis that I really had a great time um, meeting uh, and they had a lot of influence on my kendo. But um, I actually also thought about this, and um, it's funny, uh, actually, um, because the, the person I'd answer would be uh, Kawazoi Sensei. And Kawazoi Sensei is also a Jordan player, and all three of those are famous Jordan players. Um, and I'm not a Jordan player myself, but um, Kawazoi Sensei was, uh, he was unfortunately killed um, like in his 30s or something. He was a school teacher. Uh, I think he was All Japan champion or like, he was, he was around the same era as Chiba Sensei, but um, he, he was killed in a train crash, I think, uh, during a school trip to China, um, which is pretty tragic. Uh, and it, like when he was in his like mid thirties or something. So um, yeah, he was, he was kind of taken earlier than he should have been. Um, so yeah, uh, that sort of Sensei is somebody that I'd really have liked to. Uh, had the the benefit to learn from. Um, who else? Uh, I mean, you know, of course, there's like people like you know uh, Mochida Sensei and stuff, the tenth dan guys. Um, but you know, I don't, you know, I don't know enough about them. And like, 
I'm so distant from them in terms of generation, like such a big generational dif distance between the kendo that I follow now and the kendo that, that Mochida Sensei sort of practiced. I don't know if it would still, you know, it's, 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 you know, it, like if I went back in time, for example, and tried to learn from those people, it wouldn't necessarily be relevant to mo modern kendo in the, in the same way. Uh, I don't know though, but... Anyway, uh, next one, does it matter if we ki differently? Some people yell, yeah, and yell some other stuff. <laughs> uh, okay, so generally the, we normally teach, yeah, as your first kakegoi or hase, uh, that expression of ki. Um, we usually teach, yeah, but, you know, yeah, you can shout something else, you know, if, as long as it's not like words. <laughs> you can't be like, uh, hey you, or something like that. You know, you can't do that. So, yeah, um, there's, there's nothing really wrong with that, I guess. But when you strike, you must shout men kote do and ski, roughly. Okay? It must be roughly like that. Uh, there's Some people get misunderstood by the watching the Japanese uh, shiai. And to non-Japanese speakers, what it's, it doesn't sound like they're shouting men kote do and ski. Actually, they are. But it doesn't sound like it um, because they have obviously changed it. But it does. It actually, if you understand Japanese, it it it, it just about is that word. So <laughs> you do have to say kote men do and ski when you strike. Um, and this is this was posted underneath that. It says to hijack that question. What about some ki with repetitive sound like we see from some champions that are like ta ta ta. Uh, is it something related with Japanese culture? No, it's not related with Japanese culture. It's just like, you're not, it, you're not really supposed to do it because it's not really doing the idea of kiai or hase, is it? To be like, ha ta 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 ta, like that, which lots of them do. Um, I've probably done it myself without thinking. I don't know. But uh, don't, best not to copy that one, all right? <laughs> okay, uh, next one. Um, can you dem demonstrate the body block the younger players use when they bring the sword over the head and let the tip of the sword fall to their side to block the body shot and then counter with the head strike like form four? I want to practice that. So I think what you're saying, if I can understand that right, is when you block like this, covering this side of your body, against the strike and then return like kata number four this way so you see kids do it a lot where they they block this way and then strike that way uh it, it's just flexible wrists but um i don't recommend you practice that because blocking like this is a really bad strategy really really bad strategy um and it it it, it works for kids you don't see it work that much for really high level players to be honest i'm not saying they never do it because of course when you're in a panic, something like that happens, but it's not a strategy you want to go down and you don't go around practicing to do that, um, okay? Uh, but build up your wrist flexibility and you'll be able to make a strike from any position you're in. Uh, I started back 20 years ago and then <clears throat> the virus hit. Uh, I'm shopping for my first burger and any recommendations for a kit that has great cote protection? I've thin wrists and years ago, uh, the higher burger I was uh, using wasn't the best and my hands and wrists would swell up. All right, so <clears throat> lots of questions about Kendo Star stuff today, uh, which is great. Um, so welcome back to Kendo. It's great to have you back. Um, and I'm sure we'll get over this virus situation soon enough. Uh, and we'll be back in the dojo. Uh, and five years down the, the, down the line, uh, you'll be loving Kendo. And this will all be a distant memory. So um, about your first Borgu um, with great Kote protection. Uh, somebody commented already. In fact, loads of people went on and said, to get the Vanguard, uh, and that is definitely the best one to go for. It's the great all-round Borgu set. It's really durable, it looks great, and it'll last you a long time as well. If you're really worried about protection, you can get the additional Kote pad that you can order with it. You can remove that. It's just a pad that goes over your wrist and it gives a bit of extra padding, but they're already very padded um, <coughs> protective Kote anyway, uh, but it's definitely a great set to go for as your first set. If you wanted to spend a bit more, you could get something like the Vanguard Prime, but if it's your first set, I think the Vanguard is absolutely fine for you, uh, and I think you'll be more than happy with it, as everyone else that's bought it has been. Uh, okay, <laughs> next one. Uh, given the situation we're dealing with globally with uh, the virus, uh, what are your thoughts around possibly practicing uh, without Kiai or Taiyatari? 
Uh, when we are finally allowed to practice again, how will we be best to protect our dojo mates. I never felt the need of trying to wear a mask under my member for, but I suppose it would be possible. All right, so I'm glad you asked this because a few people have talked about this and there's even like, it kind of annoyed me a bit to see there was some other Boga companies, mainly in Japan, to be honest, um, at the start of all this, because Japan didn't lock down like the rest of the world. In fact, it still hasn't really. Um, but like they were selling like these masks that you put on the inside of your men as if, if you could do, if you put that in, you can go and practice kendo and all will be fine. Uh, and it's kind of deceitful and I don't like that at all, to be honest. Um, so look, I think I don't realistically doing kendo without kiai and ki keeping uh, two meters away from each other. I think, I think the way to do that is to do like, um, is, I mean, I think, if, if that's how it goes, then the, the likelihood is, is when we start to practice again, if we have to do it in a staged manner, we're either going to have to wait until it's safe for us um, or it's deemed safe for us to uh, practice together, put our ball on and practice as normal, or um, where we're going to, if it's like staged out or something like that, I guess something like us uh, still meeting together and just practicing non-contact kendo, maybe suburi together, um, possibly kata together, uh, in which case, yeah, you probably have to not shout uh, when you did it. Uh, that sort of thing might be might be the first steps towards it. I think the idea of doing the, putting your borgo on and wearing a mask inside your borgo, I, I think that's a bit, I think that's, I don't think that's practical, uh, to be honest. Um, and I don't think the idea of putting your ball on and start doing kendo without shouting and without doing tayadari, I mean, you're not doing kendo anymore. Um, so I don't think that's the way to do it either. I think it's better to just wait until we can do kendo again. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> uh, right, next one. Uh, Hi Andy, I just received my Sabiri book again and I was wondering if there are any specific Sabiri to do or not to do with the new tool. Should I just do my normal routine? I appreciate it'll take me time to get used to the new dimensions and weight, so I'm not going to go straight into what I was doing with the Shinai. Uh, thought and tips would be great. Stay safe. Okay, so uh, with your Sabiri book again, of course, of course they're usually quite a lot heavier than the Shinai. You can just do your normal Sabiri routine, but you need to graduate it in. You can't just pick it up and expect to do like 500 Sabiri if you haven't done that before with a Sabiri tour. Uh, Saburi Bokken. Uh, and at any point, if you start to feel pain in your joints or your wrists or anything like that, just go back to using the Shinai. All right? um, you could do Joge Buddy and Naname Saburi first off, something that doesn't really require much tenuchi, um, and whilst you build your strength up. And then as you start to get stronger, you can start to do uh, strikes with tenuchi. But like I say, if you do too much or if it starts to hurt too much, you must stop, go back to doing the Shinai. And uh, next one, hi Andy, last week you mentioned that certain Mune embroidery designs were popular 20 years ago, but nowadays are considered old fashioned looking. Uh, that got me thinking about bog trends. I know as many new bog sets now use fabric for kote atama, men futon and kote futon reinforcements are also fabric. Few sets use artificial leather now uh, and you have to go to hand stitch sets to get real indigo leather. Um, is this an aesthetic trend or simply a cost issue? Okay, that's a great question. So the cloth that you're talking about, the fabric for the kote and the, the futon reinforcements, that's called orizashi style boga. Uh, and most boga these days is that uh, because it is cheaper um, and it dries faster. Um, so for the most part, that is a really preferable, um, affordable material for borger. If you used real deer skin on it all, the, the in, uh, indigo leather, like you say, is the deer skin. You don't want to use cow leather, right? There's some companies out there still making cow leather. You don't see it in Japan anymore, though. They're usually made like in other like other Asian countries. Um, but you don't want to use cow leather on the ball. It's totally rubbish. It goes stiff and it cracks and it looks rubbish, right? So you don't want to use cow leather on the ball at all. But um, <clears throat> the indigo leather you're talking about is deer skin. That's very expensive. So it's only used on premium bulgur sets for full reinforcements. Um, it doesn't have to be hand stitched though. Um, so you can still keep the cost down a little bit. If you look at some of the sets that we have, like the Praetor, the Kaise, they are machine stitched. Um, sets that are inspired by the rest of our Kendo Star range. The Vanguard Praetor, Praetor for example, amazing Bulgur set. I designed that as a present for myself 
when I passed my sixth band exam, and it was so I was so happy with it. It, ju it just had to go out there as a product. Um, that's all reinforced with genuine deer skin, top grade deer skin as well. But it's a machine stitch for Dawn, so it's not as expensive as a hand stitch set, but it performs pretty much just as well as one, to be honest. Um, the Orizashi stuff, the um, the fabric, yeah, like I say, it's lighter. Uh, it, it's not really lighter actually. I don't think you really notice much of a difference. It is. It technically is a bit lighter if you if you want to me you know measure a few a few grams, but it, it's not a massive difference in terms of the weight. Um, it's uh, it does dry faster though. Um, and it's easy to look after too. Uh, synthetic leather, you still see that a little bit actually. The Vanguard, not the Vanguard, sorry, the Shinobu Wraith uh, is fully reinforced with synthetic leather because we wanted to use a modern synthetic leather that was durable uh, and looked cool. So it has a similar look to one with deer skin, but not, not quite the cost. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it's just that we've got more materials now to choose from. Um, and we choose the materials based on what the design of that bulgur set is meant for. The Shinobi Wraith, for example, we've used synthetic leather on there because uh, we really wanted to focus on the aesthetic of that bulgur. It's a really nice looking bulgur set and it's something that we really wanted to concentrate on to have it looking like a nice bulgur set um, with a specific design. It fit in with the design elements of the bulgur. The other bulgur sets that we do, and the, for the vast majority, stuff like the Vanguard V1, um, those bulg sets, uh, Vanguard Prime, they use the uh, the fabric, the Orizashi, because it's like I say, it, it's cost effective, it's durable, uh, it's it's lightweight, um, and and it dries really fast. So it really suits um, the sort of entry level, should we say, in terms of a price point as well. And then for stuff like the Praetor, the Vanguard Praetor, and the Kaisei bulg sets, <coughs> excuse me, that's where we we stick to using. Uh, the highest grade materials, things like that uh, genuine indigo dyed deer skin, uh, which looks totally beautiful. Not necessarily the best for a, a, a brand new beginner, um, especially as the colour comes off and, you know, it's expensive, um, but it does look just beautiful. Um, so, you know, we do have that as well. And then you've got the Kanza too, which is Tezashi hand stitch version as well. So. Um, right, hi Andy, are some sources of Mitori Geiko um, better than others? Uh, I could imagine the All Japan Championships being a source of inspirational, ken uh, more of an inspirational source, sorry, more of a better source of inspirational kendo than say the World Championships, but then the All Japan, Champi All Japan uh, Hachidan would then seem to be the best source. Or is it uh, applicable to your level? Also, there seems to be a difference between Ippon reels and Shinsa Shiai full footage. I don't like Ippon so much because you rarely see the setup, just the Ippon. But f some full matches are long and may result in a draw. Uh, is there a different purpose for each? Or am I missing the point entirely? Love all the videos, especially Kendra Rants. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you very much. So, okay. So, yeah, there are um, better sources of Mitori Yeko than others. Definitely, without a doubt. I wouldn't necessarily say, though, that... Um, I, I disagree slightly. I think Ippon reels are great because for the most part, you get the few seconds before and the few seconds after. It's very rare that a match is like, I mean, yeah, you, there are times where you can study a match, a full match, and it's very obvious that throughout the match, a, p a particular player is applying a specific strategy to achieve a single Ippon. It's very rare that that actually happens. Those sort of setups, they generally happen in the few seconds before the strike. It, it's, not that, it's not that they don't happen otherwise, but they're just not obvious, obvious enough to communicate in the video. If they were that obvious, the opponent would notice them, right? So it, it's... I'm not sure I totally agree with that. I think you get a lot about the uh, the before and afters of an Ippon from the Ippon reels as well. But having said that, I think it is important to watch full matches and grading videos as well because you do get to watch the full flow of the match. You do get to see how strikes are um, sort of fell out from each other and how they're made against each other. And what's important as well is actually not just watching the successful strikes, but watching the unsuccessful ones as well. Sometimes you see a strike and be like, well, why wasn't that Yippon? And it gives you a chance to compare it to the ones that were, and it will increase your understanding of Yuko Datotsu. Um, and also, uh, it's good to watch the Shinpan as well. Watch how they're moving, watch how they're 
signaling because that's something you have to do as well. Um, so yeah, I definitely think that watching all sorts of different uh, types of Kendall videos uh, gives different benefits for me Toddy Gay course. So definitely worth uh, worth doing. Okay, last one. Uh, when will you offer the KS polo shirt? <laughs> I like this one. Uh, um, and a t-shirt with some Kendall car cartoon sticker that you give with the purchase. <laughs> um, we all need the Kendall t-shirts right now. Imagine the t-shirt with the Kendall car uh, on the left front chest with Kendall is life and kanji print on the back. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, well, I don't have a plan right now to sell these t-shirts. The, the KS Polo ones, they're, they're for staff members. Uh, <laughs> uh, but maybe it's something I'd look into if there's demand for it. I am actually currently looking at setting up um, some Kendo related t-shirts that will also be another way you can help um, support us. You know, like a kind of Teespring store type thing. Uh, I have sort of done a couple of mock-up designs too. So maybe that's something you'll see uh, before long. Uh, okay, so if, if t-shirts, Kendall t-shirts is something you'd be interested in, uh, let me know, leave me a comment down below uh, so I know that that's something uh, that, that the community would like us to do. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Uh, I hope you're all doing very, very well. Uh, I'm sure it won't be long before we're back in the door draw, uh, comparatively anyway. Um, Kendall is a long road, okay, uh, and we'll walk it together again before long. Um, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, you know, all that sort of stuff. Uh, join the access group, and most importantly, shop at Kendall Star. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.